Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel. Late night Chelsea news, early morning Chelsea news. Whenever you watch these videos, if you do enjoy the daily Chelsea news updates during this busy transfer window, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to GBFC if you are new. We've got a mixture of news today. We've got some amazing news that we're going to start with about Levi Colwell. We're then going to go and talk a little bit about the swap deal that has been offered from Juventus with Dusan Vlahovic for Romelu Lukaku and Cash. Not too sure about this one. And then we're going to talk the debate regarding Chelsea's interest in Sanchez, the Brighton second choice goalie behind Jason Steele. We're going to talk about that in this video today. So we first of all begin with the amazing news about Levi Colwell. This is from Fabrizio Romano. Teamwork made difference at Chelsea to reach an agreement over new deal with Colwell. When Stanley and Stewart working on that for months, insisting on not for sale stance. Pochettino crucial spoke to Colwell since day one as top centre back part of project for present and future. Everything that we have heard regarding the rumours about what was happening with Levi Colwell has been absolutely true. We were all told about a month ago, six weeks ago, when it looked as though he was coming back for pre-season. Chelsea were adamant that he was not going to be available despite our interest in Moises Caicedo. We were always told that Levi Colwell, first of all, had to speak to Pochettino. How many minutes am I going to get? Am I in your plans? And I'm not just talking like... Carabao Cup games, FA Cup games from January. Levi Colwell wants to be a starting centre-back at Chelsea Football Club. What we can see, I think he absolutely is in the conversation. Right now, I would say it's a 50-50 between Baddy Ashiel and Colwell. We are very, very blessed at the club right now with centre-back options. De Sassi coming in. He's going to be arriving, I think, today in London for his medical. Colwell and Baddy Ashiel on the left. Thiago Silva, the sassy on the right, maybe Chalaba's going to get sold. This is what we call centre-back depth. There are virtually not a single club in the Premier League that couldn't look at Chelsea and try and handpick a defender to make their defences better. This is a very, very good sign going forward. Pochettino has obviously had here a massive impact in Levi Colwell wanting to stay. We can get rid of any ideas now that Chelsea would be willing to include Colwell in any deal for Caicedo. It's been a concern of mine because I think if Chelsea were to include Colwell in any of the deals that we're trying to strike for Moises Caicedo, then we're getting it absolutely wrong. We have already sold Tariq Lamptey, Billy Gilmore to Brighton for cut, cut prices. They're just assholes towards us when it comes to negotiations. They even bloody sold us Graham Potter. We were led to believe that Graham Potter was going to be the second bloody coming of Jesus. He wasn't. He was awful. Brighton were trying to rinse us. Now, Chelsea will keep him. The deal has not been signed yet, just so you're aware. It is a deal in principle, but the good news is all parties involved are pretty much guaranteed to sign on the dotted line. Brilliant start to the video. Levi Colwell will remain as a Chelsea player. The next piece of news that we're going to discuss here is regarding Dusan Vlahovic, a player who has been in conversation all summer long with Chelsea Football Club. A lot of people, four football matches that Chelsea played ago, would have said to you, Nicholas Jackson, before we go into the news here regarding Vlahovic, I just want to give my two cents on Nicholas Jackson. When we first signed him, and we only had the data, right? And I'm talking like the top end data here. Nine goals in his last eight games for Villarreal in La Liga. Does this convert to a top striker? Does this convert to a Premier League forward that Chelsea can be confident with going into a Premier League season? That was what we had, which allowed for scepticism. We were potentially pessimistic that we'd bought a striker with potential, but is that going to solve a hole in the first team to score us goals in the number nine spot right now. The answer to all of those questions over the course of the last four matches in Chelsea's pre-season is yes, we have bought the striker. We have got the guy. Attitude-wise, Nicholas Jackson, fantastic. Work rate, brilliant. Back to goal, Didier Drogba style. He's got it. Attitude and personality. 
with players around him. He's got it. Finishing, he's got it. Everything about Nicholas Jackson that I have seen to this point has been very impressive. So, Chelsea, more on Dusan Vlahovic. This is from Fabrizio Romano. Chelsea are yet to make decision on swap deal as Juventus insist on negotiations with Romelu Lukaku, each to their own. Deal would include fee to Juventus plus Lukaku, but Chelsea rejected Vlahovic in July. They've been offered this chance again now. There have been mixed reports about whether Pochettino would like Vlahovic or he wouldn't like Vlahovic. If Chelsea rejected the chance to sign him in July, it's probably because the team that are working on transfers right now, they knew how good Nicholas Jackson was going to be. Now, Chelsea is still left with the burden that is Romelu Lukaku. So physical weight, yeah, big one. But at the same time, it's also a serious hindrance on the club's finances. Lukaku's getting paid a premium to still be a Chelsea player. Juventus want him. Inter Milan fans don't want him. Saudi clubs want him, but Lukaku still thinks he's good enough for Europe. So Juventus are trying to get hold of Lukaku here, plus cash. I mean, when we talk about Nicholas Jackson, he is my number one striker now at the club. I, I was so excited about the, the prospect of an Osimhen, a Harry Kane at the start of this summer. I wanted Chelsea to go for those names. Now I don't want us to because I'm happy with Jackson. Jackson's my first choice going into this season. If I'm proved wrong, I know it's not going to be because our striker don't try. Because our striker isn't giving everything. And that is what I want to see. He's got all the attributes of a top striker. So with Vlahovic coming in, if he's coming in as a second choice, okay. And at the same time, again, it's important that after a couple of friendlies, we don't allow this love for Jackson's character, for his attributes, to overshadow the fact that any Chelsea striker who doesn't score goals is out. That's just the way it's always going to be. If Chelsea strikers doesn't score, look at Kai Havertz. He scored a winning goal in a Champions League final, yet because he don't score goals, we sell him to Arsenal and we're all laughing at how much money we've got for him. That's the reality of the situation. So, with Vlahovic, there are two different Dusan Vlahovic's. He's only 23 years old. He seems like he's a bloody old geezer, but it's because it feels so long ago that he was so good at Fiorentina, goes to Juventus, and a bit like when strikers join Chelsea, it all goes downhill. Dusan Vlahovic could be a good player. My concern is, Nicholas Jackson, I think, has more. I think he's a better striker for Chelsea Football Club than Dusan Vlahovic is going to be. At the same time, Vlahovic is also on big money. He's on over £200,000 a week at Juventus. So, Chelsea are going to bring another high-wage earner into the club here. Yes, we get rid of Lukaku, who's on about 35% more money than Vlahovic would be on, and significantly more than Nicholas Jackson is on at the club. But I just, I just think giving Juventus money and Lukaku is a bit like, are we getting mugged off here? Is Dusan Vlahovic actually going to be that good? And based on his recent form at Juventus... I'm not fully sold by him. Yes, he's good on turnovers. Yes, he can pop shots away. And I think maybe the Juventus move just wasn't right for him. And a move to Chelsea could be. But we've got Nicholas Jackson. And I really like Nicholas Jackson. It's as simple as that at this point. So, okay, if he joins, then we're hoping for the Fiorentina Vlahovic. We don't get that. And we've kind of just signed another high-profile, semi-young striker whose career is only just going down, how are we going to offload him? Like, I think with Jackson, I don't think we need to worry about dips right now because he's still, like, just starting the engine, so to speak. So I'm not sure on this one. I think the fact that it's... If it was just a straight swap for Lukaku, yeah, brilliant. Take the bloody lump. We'll take Vlahovic and we'll try and sort him out again. We'll stick him back in and hopefully he finds that Fiorentina form. Goal scoring, getting involved, being a nuisance. Strong player, yeah, he's great. Can score a free kick as well if we need him to. Christopher and Kunku can do that and we just bought the bloke. So, what does this also mean? The question for Armando Broya. We're going to be doing a tier list video again. The second one of this preseason later on today. So stay tuned to GBFC for that. But I think this could be curtains for Armando Broya. If Chelsea bring Dusan Vlahovic to the club, I don't see a way in for Broya. I think the fact he's not been on this preseason tour and Kunku is impressed... Jackson is also impressed. Vlahovic comes in. Amanda Broya becomes fourth-choice striker pretty quickly because he's not played football properly for a year. 
And I think Pochettino, if Poch is also trying to fuel this move for Vlahovic because he wants him at the club, there's mixed reports on this one. If Chelsea weren't interested in July, was that because Poch wasn't interested? Or was that Chelsea not being interested at the moment? I've got serious faith in the policy at the club. I've got serious faith in the signings that we're making. So let's see how this one develops. But I think it could be moving quickly because Juventus want Lukaku. For whatever reason that is, good luck to you, Juventus. Okay, I think you've already got the better player. Still, talks ongoing between Chelsea and Juve. The final story of the day is regarding Chelsea and Robert Sanchez of Brighton. Chelsea have sent formal bid for Sanchez to Brighton. Negotiations are ongoing. Told Sanchez has already accepted Chelsea as destination, as you would. Brighton hope for Sanchez to leave this summer. Chelsea and Brighton remaining talks also for Caicedo. Nothing's changed with Caicedo, by the way, so we're not going to talk about it. Chelsea's still there. With Sanchez, Robert Sanchez has lost the number one spot at Brighton, but one thing that is very important was the coach that he was working under at Brighton left Brighton, Sanchez went poor, but he went to Chelsea. So now if you put Sanchez before the dip in form and you send him to Chelsea with the same coach during that good form, maybe you get a decent goalkeeper on your hands. My concern is how much are Brighton going to fleece us here for the fee? We've not heard anything at the moment about what the bid is from Chelsea Football Club. We've also not heard Brighton accepting it. So that fee could just keep on going up because of Brighton's, relu Brighton's reluctance sorry, to sell to Chelsea Football Club. My concern is, like, is Sanchez going to be a good enough goalkeeper to really push Kepa? That's what we're trying to do here. We don't know. We, well, we do know. Kepa is not your Allisons. He's not your Onanas. He's probably not even your Ramsdale, if I'm honest. I don't think Kepa is a top five goalkeeper in the Premier League. I'd say Nick Pope might even be a better goalie than him. So Chelsea bringing in a goalkeeper here good enough to put pressure on Kepa to become an elite keeper? I'm not sure. I'm really not convinced by it, to be fair. The man lost his place to Jason Steele at Brighton. So we're going to have to wait and see. Chelsea, Brighton, negotiations for players doesn't normally go well unless we're selling to them and Brighton get a bargain. They're not going to give us any bargains here. There's no manoeuvrability for Chelsea to save money and make a smart sign-in when we are buying from bloody Brighton. I feel like there's a rivalry being created here and I'm actually all for it, to be honest. Like, Brighton, I liked them last season. Now I despise them because of the way that they're dealing with business. But anyway, Going to wrap this video up for you guys here. Let me know your thoughts. Do you want Dusan Vlahovic at Chelsea? Do you want Lukaku at Juventus? I bloody do. I want him anywhere, but anywhere near this badge that we wear close to our hearts on our left side of our chest. But anyway, thank you guys for watching this video. Subscribe to GBFC if you are new around here and haven't already done so. Come on, you blues.